Good day students. Welcome to mathgotserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over an example on um, how to find the local extrema of a function. Let's take a look at uh, question number one. We're just doing number one in this clip. Um, so for number one, we're to find all the x values for the local extrema of the function f of x equals 3x to the third minus 5x squared. And then we're to state if it is um a max or min okay all right so to find the um x values for the local extrema we're going to be looking at the critical points okay so the critical points basically tell us um the potential extrema okay so in general, the, this is the procedure for finding um, the local extrema. So for local extrema, um, local extrema are um, critical points, critical points where there are two ways you can uh, figure it out, okay? You can use the first derivative where f prime changes sign, okay? Or you can use a second derivative test where um, f, the second derivative is positive or negative at that critical point. Okay, so these are the two ways you can find the local extrema. We're going to use the first method here. Just basically look at this um, sign change of the first derivative to determine um, if it's a maximum or a minimum. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is find the critical points. Find critical points. So these uh, points are where um, some certain things happen, okay? You have a critical point where f prime is equal to zero or f prime does not exist, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and, and do that. So in order to accomplish that, we want to find the derivative first. So our function again is 3x to the third minus 5x squared, okay? So let's find the first derivative. f prime of x is 9x squared minus 10x. So we're going to find the values of x where this function is equal to 0 and where it's undefined. Okay, so let's do the first part where f prime is equal to 0. So to do that, we'll just simply set this derivative to 0. And we'll have 9x squared minus 10x. We're looking for the points where we have the horizontal tangent lines, okay? So let's factor this quadratic. You can take out x, x times 9x minus 10 equals 0. And when you solve this equation using the zero product property, you're going to have x equals 0 or um, 10 over 9. Okay, so those are our first set of critical points where f prime is equal to zero. Now, where is the derivative undefined? This is a polynomial function. It's smooth and continuous. It has no cusps, corners, or vertical tangents. So, the, um, I'm sorry, this function is defined. The original function, its antiderivative is smooth and differentiable. So, that's what we need to look for for um, vertical tangent, cost corners, or discontinuities. But if we look at the function, the derivative of the function, 
it's continuous um, and defined for all values of x, um, all sets of real numbers. So this derivative is never undefined. It is defined for all real numbers, okay? So um, that being said, our critical points, we have two of them, critical points, also known as our potential extrema, okay? Potential extrema are C1 equals zero and C2 equals 10 over nine. Remember, your critical points are not automatically an extrema. Okay, they could be critical points, but still not be an extrema. Now, how do we know that it's an extrema? What test are we going to use? We could use the first derivative test, okay? So, um, first derivative test. You can also use the second derivative, but let's just use the first derivative test here. So, to do that, we're going to... Um, First of all, draw a number line and see if we can um, draw a relationship between the sine of f prime and the behavior of f. Okay, so remember this is an open interval, so we're not looking at the endpoints. So the critical points are 0 and 10 over 9. 10 over 9 is 1 and 1 ninth. We have three intervals here. Okay, interval 1, interval 2, and interval 3. Okay, so um, we, we need to pick test values um, in these intervals to help us determine the sign of the first derivative, which gives us information about the um, behavior of f. Okay, so we want to pick um, numbers that are easy to compute the value of the sign of the first derivative. So for interval one, let's just pick x equals negative one, okay? And then interval two, let's pick x equals one. Interval three, we can use x equals two. All right, so what we're trying to find here is a sign of f prime. See what that tells us about the behavior of f okay all right so let's do it since we're looking for the sign of f prime let's recall what f prime is f prime of x i like to write the derivative in the factored form okay x times 9x minus 10. now why am i writing my derivative in the factored form the only thing i care about here is the sign and in the factored form, it's easier to determine the sign, all right? So for interval 1, we want to um, find, this is where x equals negative 1. We want to find the sign of the derivative when x is equal to negative 1. Plug that in here. If you plug in negative 1 for this va value, you're going to have a negative result. If you plug in a negative 1 for this value, you have negative 9 minus 10, which is also negative. Final answer is positive. Now notice I didn't find the value of these uh, quantities upon substitution because all I care about is the sign. Okay? Interval 2, f prime of 1. If you plug in 1 in here, you're going to have a positive number. If you plug in 1 in here, you have a negative number, namely negative 1. Positive times negative is negative. Interval 3, f prime of 2. If you plug a 2 in here, you have positive. If you plug a 2 in here, you have positive. Positive times positive is positive. Now we have the signs of our um, first derivative. Interval 1, we have positive. Interval 2, we have negative and interval three, we have positive, okay? All right, so what does that tell us about f? If the first derivative is positive, then the function is increasing, okay? So it's increasing on these two intervals, and if the first derivative is negative, the function is decreasing. So what's happening at these critical points? If you're increasing and then decreasing, this is a local max. Okay, 
And then here, if you're decreasing and then increasing, this is a local mean. All right, so let's go ahead and write our answers. We have um, local maximum at x equals zero and a local minimum at x equals 10 over 9. All right, so do, these are our two extrema. And extrema, and uh, this is a description. This is a mi maximum, and that is a minimum. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. Um, feel free to subscribe to our channel for other cool updates to um, this video collection series we have. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to include it in the comments section below. More clips can be found on mathgodserve.com under AP Calculus. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.